So we're gonna be talking about seam orientation, uh, which is a new metric that we're providing with the Pro 3.0. Pitching, when it comes down to it, is all about just deceiving the hitters um, so that they don't know where to swing the bat. And pitchers do this by developing multiple pitch types. Um, so they do that by varying the speed, varying the movement, and really when it comes down to it, that's what different pitch types um, are, is different speed and different movement. Now, how do we get the ball moving differently? There's a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, one of the big ones is spin. And um, for over 100 years, we've known the impact of spin on a, on a ball flying through the air. And the effect that creates movement from spin is the Magnus effect. Now, something that we've only known recently, uh, within the last four years, is that the seams on the baseball also play uh, a factor in how the ball ends up moving. And this is due to the seam shifted wake effect um, based on research that was conducted at Utah State University. And kind of the high level understanding of the seam shifted wake effect, the position of seams on the baseball relative to the direction of travel cause imbalanced pressure distribution on the ball that creates a force that acts on the ball to move it in a different direction than it otherwise would. Um, so, as a result, we need to be paying attention to how the seams are oriented as the ball's flying through the air, because how the seams are oriented is going to affect how the ball ends up moving. I was privileged to be a part of the seam shifted wake research going on at Utah State in 2020 during the pandemic, while um, baseball was shut down for a time. MLB pitcher Jared Hughes reached out to Dr. Barton Smith um, who was the professor that I worked under at Utah State University. And uh, he reached out to him because he'd been looking into our research and he noticed that you know his pitches weren't moving like they used to and he wasn't sure why. And he thought that you know maybe seam shifted wake was part of the reason why his pitches you know originally moved the way they did and why they weren't moving the way that he was used to. And so, after uh, communicating with Dr. Smith, he was able to, to realize that he was getting different results in his movement because his seam orientation, uh, or the orientation of the ball, wasn't consistent um, with how he'd been throwing it in the past. You know, intuitively, based on what we knew about movement at the time, he originally thought that this was due to inconsistencies in his spin axis, but it ended up actually being due to inconsistencies in his seam orientation. And this is all detailed in the Baseball Prospectus article, not just about Magnus anymore. Okay, so talking about what even is seam orientation. Um, the ball, as it's flying through space, other than knuckleballs, it's constantly spinning. So if you think about the ball oriented in space for a snapshot of time, that orientation is going to be constantly changing throughout the duration of the pitch. But what is constant is how the ball is oriented about the spin axis itself. In this case, with this little prop, uh, this is your traditional four seam orientation. And so where these seams are positioned or located relative to the spin axis is going to be constant. And so this is how we're describing seam orientation then is with the positive pole of that spin axis. So what's really, what's really cool about the seam shifted wake effect is that it is this additional force that's acting on the ball to cause it to move in a way that it otherwise wouldn't. And so this has the potential to uh, you know, help pitchers who don't have elite spin rates or elite spin efficiency on like their fastball, for example, to still have elite movement um, based on you know, simply how they're orienting the ball as they throw it. For MOB pitchers, um, and really any pitchers, you want to know how your pitches are going to move because that informs where you're going to throw them, um, how often you're going to throw them, what batters you're going to throw them to. And so if you're experiencing these inconsistencies, it's, it's just hard to know if you're going to be effective or not. And so the better you can understand uh, the things that you need to be paying attention to as you're throwing the pitches, uh, the more effective those pitches will be in the end. In my hands, I have this uh, ball with the rod sticking through it. And this rod is representative of the spin axis that the ball is rotating around as it travels to you towards the, towards the plate. And what we're doing with our seam orientation metric 
is we're describing where on the baseball the spin axis is, is sticking through the ball. So you can notice, you know, if you stick a rod through the ball, it's sticking through in two different locations. The longitude and latitude coordinates that you're seeing in uh, the diamond app and in the cloud is showing where the positive spin axis is sticking through the ball. So the way to think about this is all axes in general have a positive and negative pole. So if you think about the Earth, um, you have a North Pole and a South Pole, and the Earth rotates counterclockwise about the North Pole, which is its positive spin axis. And so we are reporting the coordinates where the pole, the positive pole, is sticking through the ball. And so that point that you're seeing in the Diamond app and in the cloud is the point about which the ball rotates counterclockwise. To demonstrate how this is gonna be different from what you've seen in uh, the past with the Pro 3.0 um, and what you've seen with the Pitching 2.0, as far as the differences go in the user interface and the Diamond app, traditionally you're used to seeing the ball spinning in just a straight 4 seam orientation. Um, the, the spin direction and the gyro degree have been, you know, as, as the Rapsoda unit is measuring it, but the seam orientation has always just been your traditional four seam orientation. So all that's changed with the Pro 3.0 seam orientation capabilities, and we're gonna have Robbie throw in some example pitches to show how that um, is gonna be different in the user interface moving forward. All right, so we just had Robbie throw some example pitches, and we're gonna take a look at what that looks like in the UI. Previously, like I, like I mentioned, where we were just seeing the ball spinning in a classic four seam orientation, now we're actually um, measuring what that orientation is and showing that in the app. So let's take a look at this, this example right here. Um, this was a two seam fastball that Robbie threw. Um, it's got a 132 spin direction. 7.1 degree uh, for gyro, and none of that is new. That's always been there, um, the orientation of the spin axis itself. But the orientation of the seams hasn't always been there. But if you look at this ball spinning, you can see that it's not spinning in a four seam orientation like it used to be. Um, there's two icons that you can um, click on to help visualize um, the seam orientation data a little better. Um, this icon right here shows you the actual latitude and longitude coordinates. And then if we click on this um, other icon, it's a, what we call the transition um, into the seam orientation. So what it shows us is it moves the spin axis, the positive pull of the spin axis, um, back to the origin of the coordinate system. And then it rotates the ball so that the spin axis is at the appropriate longitude, then the appropriate latitude, and then um, it rotates the spin axis itself um, so that it's in the correct spin direction and gyro degree. So let's look at that transition again. So it goes back to the origin, moves to longitude, moves to the latitude, spin direction, and then the gyro degree. Something that's really important to keep in mind is that when looking at the seam orientation data that we're providing and looking at that spinning ball animation in the app, um, what you're seeing is how the ball is actually flying through the air. Um, what we're not showing you is how the ball was held in your hand. And at the end of the day, um, what really matters as far as how the ball will end up moving is how the ball is spinning through the air. So when you're adjusting your grips, you're gonna be adjusting those grips um, to get the ball spinning the way you want it to be spinning. We're not showing you how the ball was gripped in your hand because a lot of different pitchers will you know, grip the ball differently, um, but the ball can end up spinning the same way. So really, when it comes down to it, seam orientation impacts the seam shifted wake effect, which impacts how the ball moves. So you see the, the results of your experiments with the seam orientation, in your vertical and horizontal break numbers. Um, and so really it, the best way to use this data to improve is to marry the two together and be looking at your seam orientation and your break numbers together. 
And so as you do that historically, you can figure out uh, you know, which uh, seam orientations tend to give you the movement that you're looking for. Um, and then you know, as you're throwing um, a bullpen, um, you can be looking at that data live, getting that live feedback each time you throw of how the um, ball is oriented. You can see, you know, is this the way I want it to be oriented? If I make a little change, will I get that movement that I'm looking for? You can also see how effective you are at replicating the same seam orientation so that you get that consistent movement that you're looking for. For a lot of pitch metrics like, uh, you know, velocity, spin rate, um, even spin efficiency. Repsoto's provided ranges of, of where um, you know you kind of want those pitches to live. Seam orientation isn't that easy and that's because really what we're talking about with seam orientation is inducing that seam shifted wake effect. The seam shifted wake effect is a function of a lot of different properties. One of those you know is velocity, another is spin rate, spin axis, which is to say the spin direction and the gyro degree. So there's a lot of different um, pitch characteristics that go into whether or not a certain seam orientation will create that seam shifted wake effect. So for example, you could have uh, one seam orientation that works really well for your fastball, but not for your slider. And you could have a pitcher who has a really good seam shifted wake change up based on his seam orientation, but that same seam orientation might not work for another pitcher because they have a different velocity or spin rate or spin axis. Um, and so there's not really necessarily a range that you're gonna want to, uh, or that we can provide you in order for you to live in um, because it's, it's just not that simple. And so what's, what's really um, useful about seam orientation is that it's a tool as you're working on different pitches, um, get you that movement that you want and know what seam orientation helped you get that movement. Whereas in the past, pitchers typically relied on, you know, just remembering how the ball feels in their hand or taking notes of, you know, what that kind of looks like in their hand or taking pictures of the ball in their hand to remember how they were throwing these balls. Now we're providing you with a tool to show you, hey, the ball is actually spinning like this and this um, paired with the movement uh, will help you figure out what seam orientations work best for you as an individual pitcher and for all of your individual pitch types. When it comes to the three ways that it can help, um, really the first thing to think of and to you know, internalize is that seam orientation is gonna look different from pitcher to pitcher, um, which is to say that the ideal seam orientation um, is gonna look different. And that's the case from pitcher to pitcher. That's also the case from pitch type to pitch type. And that is because different pitch types are going to create that seam shifted wake effect differently um, because it is a function of so many other properties of the pitch itself. And so the big takeaway is that um, seam orientation, using it effectively, is going to take experimentation. And this is something that pitchers have always done and our seam orientation metric is another tool to help you in that experimentation. So the second big thing here, the first thing is um, no two seam orientations are gonna be the same. Um, no two ideal seam orientations are gonna be the same. Um, the second thing is um, it's important to have immediate feedback and that's what um, we're providing in the, uh, in the Diamond app is that immediate feedback of this is how your ball is actually spinning and this is how it's oriented and this is the break that you got as a result. And so by looking at those two together, you can see is this seam orientation you know, helping me get my pitches moving the way I want them to? When I make adjustments, now am I getting that movement? Um, which seam orientation works the best? And then the third thing is looking at historically, you know, how good am I at replicating that seam orientation that I am wanting um, so that I get that um, repeated break that I'm looking for so that I can get the results ultimately that I want as I'm pitching to a batter. Okay, so just a quick um, overview of what seam orientation is. We're describing the point on the ball that the ball rotates counterclockwise about. Um, so where the seams are positioned relative to that point is going to stay constant as the ball is flying uh, to the plate. And why this is important is because the location of the seams relative to where the ball's moving um, 
has the potential to create the seam shifted wake effect if those seams are positioned uh, properly. Um, and so this is why we need to pay attention to this because this is uh, a force that can uh, create additional movement on your pitch than you're getting from spin alone.